So I'm going to take the valve off my machine so I can tear it apart and look at it and find out why is mine still functioning after six and a half years and my sister's failed at a year and four months or something, five months. So what's, what's different about it, if anything? I haven't had this apart in oh, quite a while. And when I'd put this back together originally, I'd never even bothered to put any sealer on it uh, because I'm assuming the valve is going to take care of it. I didn't have to worry about blocking off the end of mine with a stopper or anything. Well, when I put it back together, maybe I'll put it back together the whole way. Well, my machine's a little tougher because it's shorter the the original hose. Oh, that's... I think I need them closer together. Oh, come on. Oh, wait. Boy, last time I put that on there, I really crammed it on there. Okay. All right. Well, let's see. Take it over to the work area. That side looks pretty good. That doesn't look bad either, so let's go check it out. So it looks very similar to my sister's. I can see the ball in there and it looks perfect still. Let's see if we can see that. Okay. Yeah, that still looks great. So why is the other one corroded and this one isn't? Well, well, we can see if we can take it apart. Oh, I can't take that off. On the other one, it was a hex one. That's a five-sided one. I don't have a tool to take that apart. Well, shucks. I can't take that one apart. Huh. You can see, got some nice strong magnets, even though they're teeny. Here's what I found out. This is stainless steel. That's why it didn't have a problem, even though it looks, it's a rough casting. Different. Okay. And I can go into the ball on there. It doesn't stick. Well, there's the big difference. Let me find my, what did I do with my sister's one? Here it is. Okay, on my sister's, the body is stainless, but the ball is not. The ball is, yeah, the ball is, was the problem. So it has a stainless steel body, but the ball was regular steel junk that was chromed. And so is the stem. Yeah, it's quite strong. The ball in there is not steel, so I don't know that it's uh, stainless steel or brass or what. Anyway, there's no corrosion on that ball. That thing is still clean as can be. Well, now I know one of the differences. And also, it would be important, I think, to make sure this is the side facing the machine as opposed to this side, because this is the side that the threaded piece goes in. This side doesn't have that. And then also when I'm draining it, I should always make sure that it's 100% open and never put it just part way because that would, could allow liquid to get into the other spaces behind that ball area. And that's why mine's still working after six and a half years and this one failed after a little over a year. The ball is junk on that one. This one's good on all the components. And we did buy a replacement stainless steel one.
Yeah, it's, it's a slightly magnetic kind of stainless steel. Let's check the ball, because that is an important piece of it. Yep. So this one should hold up quite well, too. So I think I'm going to be good for a bunch more years with my valve. I'm going to put it back on, and I can't tear it apart because I don't have the right kind of wrench. I, I need a five-sided one, and I don't have that. I'd have to grind something. All right, so I'm going to put this back together, and I'll keep using it. So I'm going to get this back together. I used a little bit of the Teflon thread tape just on the end, and then I'm going to use the liquid uh, tape on the rest of it and assemble it. And I'm making sure that this end is the end. Huh, that doesn't show up. And I'm going to make sure that this is the end facing toward the machine as opposed to the piece that unscrews. That side I'm going to have going down to the drain. That way if there's any water sitting at any time it can't get into the threads of that uh, nut piece or that, that piece that holds it. The inside of that uh, ball is still clean and shiny. The outside is smooth, no, no pitting. I guess that's what happens when you use a stainless steel ball instead of just a chromed steel ball. Hey, okay, we'll get that put back together. All right, let's get that. Yeah, that's a little tougher because it's short. So I'm going to go all the way around there and get that screwed on there. Darn it, I forgot the wrenches. Okay, let's get that on there. It probably stop there because it's going to be plenty sealed. All right, there we go. And I need to print the grommet to hold that. Okay, now I'll get the drain part in there. So in this part, I'm just using the liquid tape. I'm not going to even bother with the Teflon. It seemed perfectly dismantleable still, but it did a great job sealing. Okay, that's back together and then I can get the drain tube back on there and that's it. So the drain valve on mine is still fine. It's been over six and a half years. Everything inside it looks perfect. Uh, it's all shiny and clean still for the ball. It hasn't leaked at all. Uh, if it does leak, I do have a spare and it's a stainless steel one instead of the chromed mild steel, which pitted like crazy on my sister's and we replaced hers with one. I don't know how it's going to do long term because it's a brass one. Uh, I didn't think to check the ball to see how it was built, but I have a backup one that is stainless steel with a stainless steel ball. So if either of ours fails, I'll have a spare. So next we're going to work on a little project with her seal. Spare parts. The freeze dryer probably doesn't require a lot of spare parts hanging around. The components that I think that I would want to have on hand is uh, one of the valves, the drain valves, but that probably only applies if I've got a bad drain valve. One of the things I would suggest also is making sure that if you ever take your valve off, put it back on, that this side is toward the machine and not this side. This is the side that has the screw in piece that pushes it all together. Well, it has the threads in there and things could get caught in there. On this side, it just has the machined piece in there and there's nowhere to get anything caught. The other thing is, I think it's probably best to only have the valve in two positions, either 100% open or 100% closed because you end up with the openings here and then the ball is, uh, how do I show that? Uh, it's like this. So your drain comes through here and your ball is like this up against there so nothing can come through. And then you rotate it like this and then it drains through. If you put it part way, then 
you could get water around this side of it and into that space where the washer is. Um, that could be problematic. So if you don't ever leave it in that position of three quarters closed or one quarter open, whichever, um, it, maybe things can't get back there. Or maybe you put it in that position and, and flush it with water from the inside. I, I don't know. But anyway, if it's all the way open and all the way closed, nothing can get into that space. So far, my valve looks beautiful inside. And it's probably because of the materials it's made out of. So we do have an extra valve between myself and my sister. I don't know if we'll ever need it on mine because it still looks great. The other component that is probably more likely to need to be replaced is the seal. So it's important, of course, that, uh, that there's no cracks across it, no cuts, nothing across this direction. Mine have a couple of splits along this direction, and they have for more than three years. I bought a spare seal over three years ago, and we just put it on my sister's machine because hers is starting to break down on the inside a little bit. This front face still looks perfect, has no blemishes on it. And again, mine does. I could probably show that. So hers, let's see if I can find the spot. There's a spot inside that I noticed when we was cleaning it. When we clean this, we just run water in here and then I take a, a thin, uh, like a table knife, a, a frosting knife with a cloth on it and just wipe along in here. We never spread this open because basically you've got a big U-shaped piece of silicone and I think it has some enforce, reinforcement pieces inside that space. But if you spread it open, you're likely to damage it. That's my thought anyway. So we just don't do that. So, yep, this is the spot right here. So um, I'm going to see if we can see into there. Hey, you can see down inside there? That's the fibers inside the mold. See, I'm only opening it a very short distance, but in this space, it's broken down a bit. So the seal on her machine, this seal, has been having more difficulty, uh, more difficult time sealing lately. It leaves a couple of spaces in areas and they corresponded with that broken down spot in here. I think it's because her chamber wall is so thin when this is under vacuum, when the machine is under vacuum, you're pressing on this with over a thousand pounds of pressure of air on the outsides. The chamber walls are going to cut into this uh, silicone. My chamber walls are almost twice as thick. You're spreading that force over the amount of area, uh, so it's less likely to cut into it. So what I'm going to try is adding some silicone in the bottom of that and then pushing it on to the front of my chamber and see if we can make this last longer. And of course, we'll order a spare. Another spare, because we used up my spare. Yeah, so this part right there is definitely breaking down. Boy, that's the best show I've seen of it. I, I'm gonna take this back off, see if we can see it again. Can you see that? Yeah, that's the fibers at the bottom. Okay, so what I'm going to try to do is take some of this silicone, which is aquarium safe, and I'm going to squeeze some of it down into the bottom of that groove after cleaning it with alcohol, and then going to push it onto the front of the chamber. So I put some of that silicone on here a day or so ago so I could make sure that it does stick to this silicone, and it stuck very, very well. So I can break it, but it still has the layer stuck to the, the seal. So I think it's going to be really good for sealing this. And it's probably not a long-term solution, but I'm going to try it out. All right, let's get this over here. I'll get this moved over here. Well, there's one. Okay, there's one of the spots in the seal. 
Okay, there's another one of the spots. So there's two or three spots along that seal that have problems, but luckily for me, they go along the seal, not across the seal. So they haven't leaked yet that I know of. So with that seal off, I'm going to go ahead and clean this edge with some alcohol, which probably won't matter because of what I'm going to do to it next. With that all cleaned, I'll make sure that the groove of this is cleaned well with some alcohol. Worst case is I'll have that seal stuck on there and I'll have a great deal of difficulty taking it off. Uh, but again, worst case is I cut it off, I clean it all up and I put a new one on. I'm going to order a new one anyway because that one's damaged and my original one from six and a half years ago has damage on it and I've known that for more than three years. I uh, got the replacement about three and a quarter years ago. Uh, so those damaged spots have been there for at least that long. And I'm actually going to just put a little bit of alcohol in the groove and then put the paper towel in there and then just go all the way around. You can see I spilled a fairly decent amount. And this is how we usually clean our seal. You just use a paper towel or a cloth and go around it with uh, warm soapy water and clean it out of there. Make sure everything's nice and clean. It seems to work very well. Let's do that again with a fresh area. We should be nice and clean in there. We'll let any of that alcohol dry and then we'll put a bead of silicone around there and stick it on the front of there. With that cleaned in there, I can see lots of areas that are in bad shape in there. That definitely looks like it has a lot more damage inside there than I would have expected. I'm going to try to put a fairly even bead of that around there. And I think it's best to put it in the bottom of that groove. Because if I try to put it on here, I'll end up wiping it off. So nope, I'm going to try to put it in the bottom of that groove. So I'm going to put that at the bottom. And then I'm going to start squeezing an amount in there and then just pulling it forward. That seems to be working, kind of squiggling it and leaving a bead, a fairly even looking bead so far. Whoa, I didn't lock the wheels in place or down. I can lock that one. So I'm not trying to put a lot in there. I'm just trying to put a small bead in there along the bottom. And then I'm hoping that as I push it into place, it'll kind of push into any cracks inside um, the gasket area, the seal. You can see down in there. So I'm just squeezing it and pulling it along. You can see the silicone bead down in there. So it really is a small amount. And I could probably show that on a sample piece after we're all the way around and take it out of there. But it doesn't, it, it shouldn't need a lot because the uh, chamber wall is going to fill this space. So it just needs enough to fill any gaps in it. Okay, we're still still got more than a third of the way around still to go. As far as I can tell, I haven't missed a single spot. I might have it a little thicker in some spots. When I pause, it ends up with a little thicker spot, I think. Okay, we're almost there. Just got to get to here and I don't want to run into the other one very much and scrape it or or double up. Okay, now bring it out this way. All right, looks like I have it all the way around. You can see it didn't use very much. You know, it's a very small bead. Oh, I'm just 
getting it started. I'm not pushing it all the way at first. I'm just trying to get it started all the way around. Make sure that it's in the groove. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and use the door to push it into place. So very gentle. I'm not going to lock it all the way. I'm just putting it that much. And then I'm going to release it. Okay, there's a, a little bit of the bead of about how much I tried to put in the bottom of that. You can see it's not a lot. It's just a little stripe of that all the way around the whole valley, the whole groove of the seal. My thought is there's basically zero space in the groove and the metal of my chamber walls, because my chamber wall is as, almost twice as thick as my sister's. So it really fills that groove up. So we're going to find out how that works. I think it's going to be interesting. Now, I'll let it set for a couple days, make sure that it cures before I try to pull it off of there. So we'll see how that'll work. It'll be interesting, I think. Well, we'll come back and check it later. It's been quite a while since I put the seal back on with that silicone. I think it's been four or five days. Uh, it probably only needed two. And we're going to test it out. So we're going to check to see if it will hold vacuum. And I think it's going to be just fine and work great until I go to try to take it off. I think it's going to have a problem coming off and then it may not seal again going back on. But I wanted to try this out. So we're going to go ahead and get it started uh, just to do the vacuum test and see how it works out. I've got a good seal ring all the way around it already. To test it, I'm just going to go ahead and start it just my normal way, custom, and start. The drain valve is closed, continue. And then I'm going to just jump to the next cycle because I don't care about it freezing. Okay, we'll bring that in close so we can see the time and pressure at a half minute. It's still above 2,500, which is what we would expect. Okay, there we go. Almost three and a half minutes. So that seems kind of slow, but it wasn't frozen either. So maybe it will take a little longer when it's not cold. Well, let's see how long it takes to get below 500 then. Okay, four minutes. Okay, it's still dropping nicely. So at six and a half minutes, we are at 746. Okay, we're below 500. So it's only eight and a half minutes, or eight and three quarters minutes. That's not bad. About eight and a half minutes to get below 500. Let's see where it goes to. At 20 minutes, it made it to 149. So right now it's been 20 and a half minutes and it says 139. Um, they're gonna stop it because we don't need it running. And I'll just leave it sealed and see if it holds the vacuum well enough, which would mean that there's no big leaks coming in or any leaks coming in. And so that would mean the drain valve, the seal, uh, the, the vacuum hose, both ends of it, the check valve on the vacuum pump. So all of the components are holding air is what that would mean uh, or are airtight. So that's working for now. I suspect it's going to fail when I go to take it off. It's either going to be stuck to the chamber or it's going to be so molded for that exact position that if I turn it any direction, it might fail then. We'll find out. Uh, I can still run a few batches until then. It did real well. Oh, I forgot. I could turn that thing off. It's worked. It worked well. And it's good for until I need to take it off. Uh, then I'll be concerned about whether or not it'll work again when I put it back on. We'll check it then. So we'll check in on it 
when I take it off for cleaning and see how it goes back on. And I won't do that until at least we have the new seal because we ordered a new seal and I'll probably order another new one because I will plan on using that one on here soon. Let's go take a quick look at the seal that I've been using for six and a half years. There, you can see that quite clearly. Again, it's not splitting very much, but you can see it moves a teeny bit. I'm going to just put a little bit of silicone on that and see what happens. Oh. So I don't know how that's going to work out, but this silicone is pretty squishy. So as long as it doesn't peel off, I think it'll work. So I'm going to try that out and we're going to look at a couple of other spots. So there's another one of the spots. And again, it doesn't seem to be deep, but it, it looks like it's a kind of a red fiber from there. there's some little fiber bits kind of sticking through. Again, it's not in the main seal area. It's right off to the edge, so it doesn't break all the way across the seal. But it is interesting that it has little fibers. So I think that must be part of how the center of this is constructed. And when we're completely done with this one, we'll cut one of these open. Okay, you can see, besides this area that I already did over here, you can see that this looks like it's starting to cut through all the way along here. Um, but it's still been working, and I didn't see any on the inside of the area, so I'm going to smear some of the silicone on that area too. We're going to test this out. All right, we'll test that. We'll come back and check this and we will try putting that on. I think this will be squishy enough to still seal along with the rest of this. I don't know, but we'll find out, see if we can get more time out of this seal.